Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Jagmeet Singh doesn't seem to be making any sense with the things that he's saying. They're very disconnected, and they're very they they seem to be coming from very different extreme pockets. On the one hand, he wants everybody to be, you know, think that he's trying to save Canadians and all the rest of it. But on the other hand, he refuses to try and topple the Liberal government and other examples like that. I think he's having a hard time understanding that he's no longer relevant to the political landscape of Canada between his inconsistency around the Liberal Party and keeping them in power by refusing to initiate in no confidence or even to support a no confidence. His position on how everything in the country is still not the Liberals or his fault. It's all the Conservatives' fault, even though they haven't had the opportunity to do anything for 10 years. And Jagmeet Singh has been in power essentially for the last three years, sitting on the coattails of the Liberal Party. So then he comes and does an announcement for that new lady, the new NDP. And in the middle of it all, he says some very strange things. So I just want you to have a listen. I want to start by reflecting on what's going on in the Middle East. We are heartbroken to see the rising tension and the escalation of violence. I think about Lebanon right now and Canadians who have family there and worried about where their family members are. Uh, they don't know what's going to happen next and they see an incursion from Netanyahu's extremist government into southern Lebanon and are deeply worried. I think about Israelis that are living now daily with the threat of Hezbollah, a terrorist organization in Iran, bombing and what that means to live under the threat of constant bombing. And I think about the ongoing violence in Gaza and Palestinians who have lost so much and the constant and the ongoing violence in that region and the loss of life, people being killed and how Canada is not doing its part to stop the escalation of violence. Canada and Justin Trudeau could have put in place a two-way arms embargo immediately to send a clear message to the extremist Netanyahu government, but has failed to do so. And we'll continue to apply pressure to make sure that Canada is doing everything it can to prevent the escalation of violence. So we're coming up on a year to the anniversary of the horrendous attack by Hamas. A couple of things that he said there made no sense at all, right? Like, for, in, for some reason, thinks that the Israeli government is an extremist government and that Hezbollah and Hamas are not extremists. He didn't call them extremists at all. Further, what I can't believe that he doesn't understand is that Hezbollah does not up. Hezbollah is paid, like funded by Iran. Everybody agrees on that. But they are based in Lebanon. So what he calls an incursion into Lebanon is actually the Israel, Israel trying to root out Hezbollah. Right? Just like they have taken the, the head off of Hamas. I mean, what have they killed? Like, they've removed like seven of the top 10 leaders of Hamas. Hamas essentially, prob- I, I would be surprised if Hamas makes a rebound from that. I mean, there, there will still be extremists, surely, but they won't necessarily work under the banner of, of this other organization. But I don't think that he understands that. I think he's just talking. You know, I mean, extremist government, it seems a bit. Of a, of a strange position to say that Iran is not an extremist government, Hezbollah is not extremist, Hamas is not extremist, but Israel is extremist. I'm not sure that that adds up. Then he took some questions, and his answers were the same as he's been saying now for months. But let's just have a listen, or weeks anyway. What is it going to take for the NDP to vote non-confidence in this government? We will look at every vote that comes before us and make a decision based on what's in the best interest of Canadians. What's the line, though? Is there a red line? We'll look at each vote as it comes. Walked in. What about introducing your own motion? You will have an opposition day. The Conservatives have used theirs for a vote for non-confidence. The Bloc now may pull their support. Will you introduce a motion of non-confidence at the earliest opportunity? Uh, we will be introducing uh, an opposition day motion, and we'll let you know what that motion is going to be about. You've said previously that the two key things you've been looking for is a price cap on groceries uh, and help for renters. Have you had any negotiations with the Liberals about those two issues? Uh, so far, there's been no movement on those two issues. Are you in any kind of talks at this point to just try and get any kind of more, uh, extract any more favors out of the Liberals? 
we're in no current uh, conversations with the Liberals. Uh, based on every vote that comes before us, we will try to fight as hard as we can to get the most for people. But there are no negotiations or no conversations right now in specific. Israel has a right to respond to Iran's attacks. Uh, when we see what's going on in, in Israel, the fact that they're being bombed uh, by both a terrorist organization like Hezbollah and by Iran, that's deeply concerning. Uh, we are worried about an escalation of violence. And what we have seen is a complete disregard for innocent lives. And we know it is contrary to international law to have collective punishment. And the idea that, that innocent lives are just collateral damage is fundamentally wrong and it violates international law. So who's violating the law, Mr. Singh? Is it Iran that's violating the law with the indiscriminate bombing of Israeli cities? Is it Hamas when they came over the fence and tried to and just attack people that were dancing under a Buddha? I remember that. There was a gigantic Buddha there at that at that one party, that one rave where so many people were indiscriminately targeted. Is it the Hamas organization, or excuse me, the Hezbollah organization that is indiscriminately firing rockets over the border and into Israel. Now, I'm not going to dive deep into the f madness that is the politics of, of the Middle East or the hatred that is driven by much of what happens in that particular region of the country, of the world, excuse me. But I will say that this guy wants to be the leader of this country, and that's his diplomatic stance. I, <laughs> you can't be serious. Unbelievable. I thought um, MP Jolie was bad. I mean, she is bad, but this guy would be worse. The NATO poll shows that you're tied with the Liberals right now, so why aren't you pushing for, uh, to go to the polls right away? Uh, we'll look at every motion that comes before us and make that determination. That so she asks him, if you're tied with the liberals, why aren't you ready to go for an election right now? Because what that indicates, right, is that he would gain a lot of seats, the NDP. Because Jagmeet and, and Trudeau are polling simultaneously, like at the same level, then it stands to reason that he could gain a lot of seats and maybe even gain the uh, official opposition position. Now, it could be, like I say, that Claude is right, that they're, that he doesn't have the money and that's what he's really afraid of and that that's why he's so grumpy because he knows that secretly he's you know humiliating himself. Or it could be that he truly has the delusion of believing that he can become the, uh, the majority government of Canada. For a guy that talks the way that he talks, I don't see where he makes that connection, but I suppose it has to be a fairly strong level of delusion to convince yourself that you can tell Canadians that you're tearing up the agreement and then keep the agreement and they're not going to see right through that. I can't speak to necessarily what his internalized thought process is, but I can say with absolute certainty that if he's targeting anything more than being the official opposition, he's not really paying attention to the world around him. Because he lumped his lot in with the Liberal Party for so long, people do not see any distinction. They just see the same, you know, one is orange, that's all, one is red, one's orange, it's just a, you know, liberal light, right? I think that he's lost the plot, and I, I don't believe that he is looking at the reality of the situation on the ground. Of course, he knows that he's never going to overcome the Conservatives because he's tied in too tightly with the Liberal Party. And if the NDP was smart, they would remove Jagmeet Singh and say, listen, we see that that was a problem and now we're going to start all over again with a brand new leader. So she says to him that you're 19 points ahead, why don't you trigger an election? And he says, we're going to take it case by case. How is that a case by case? It's 19, you're, you're, you're tied level with the Liberal Party. Both of you are like a distant second from the Conservative Party. What is case by case about that? What, is, what are you talking about? What are you on about? Like, really, does that make any sense to anybody? Because I don't see the connection. I think that he's just practiced saying that sentence that he's not really listening to the question. He just repeats it over and over again and hope that you and I believe it. Hope that you and I think that on the one hand, he tore up the agreement, but on the other hand, he's keeping... Lock in, lockstep with the agreement. It is a very strange position, and I'm not 100% certain that he understands just how ridiculous it looks. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.